man, it is good to be back on the air with you guys. Week two, Nights of Horror Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for all the support last week. And I had such a great time uh, last week and already starting to book shows for the future and what we want to do with Nights of Horror Radio. It is incredible to have you guys here with us on a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, however you want to look at it. We are so back. 100%. 100%. Thank you for tuning in. If you guys are joining us again, we really appreciate it. Um, we got a lot of great things for the for the show today. We got uh, the Wicked 64, music by Wick, Wicked 64, uh, some rap tonight. It's going to be great. Uh, you're going to hear that in, uh, in a few minutes. Um, we got some more Iron Rule. We're going to finish the rest of that EP for you guys. Good morning to you, Vertigo. Um, and we got some Seizure today to, to finish off the show but originally today's plans were we were going to kick the show off and we were going to talk about abigail i had just seen abigail and imaginary last weekend and we we're going to talk about abigail at the start of the show however things transpire in the haunt world we were talking about this last week and uh things sort of happen out of the blue sometimes um that being said we're going to talk immediately uh reactions with uh we're gonna talk with matt we're gonna talk with vertigo paul um about the most recent teaser that halloween horror nights has put up uh today involving halloween horror nights 2024 for both coasts uh if you guys have been paying attention on the orlando side of things they have been teasing things little by little like unleashing this door opening this door to release the fear the chaos that is halloween horror nights um a lot of stuff to break down in this teaser. I'm going to get in the Discord with the boys and all that. Y'all taking... <laughs> Y'all talking shit on my band. I'm here for it, LOL. Nah, bro, actually, uh, we are going to be playing some of your band's music later on in the show like we did last week, so stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, when we get some seizure up in there. We're just trying to get some seizure exposure, bro. That's how it is. That's how it is. Uh, all right, I'm gonna get in the Discord, uh, meet up with the boys, and uh, we're gonna break down this this trailer because um, there's a lot to break down, a lot to talk about. I want to get the boys' thoughts, and then afterwards we are going to be doing our bracket system for um, for uh, the best maze of 2023, that which involves uh, the four haunts in SoCal, Halloween Horror Nights, Not Scary Farm, Ellie Haunted Hayride, and um, what did we choose for the last one? Was it Six Flags Magic Mountain? Oh no, we we did Shacktoberfest. We should have thrown Six Flags in the mix, but it's okay. We'll get it in the next in the next bracket we do for for that because we might be doing some scare zones next. If this one's pretty good and you guys like this, so uh, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, I'm gonna get the guys in the Discord, get that set up. But uh, for starters, a little something new today. Uh, we're gonna go in the rap scene. Uh, we were approached, uh, we were looking online everywhere we can to find some original music. We want to keep Nights of Horror Radio as original as possible, and that means getting out to artists like you, hopefully, that have music that want to promote out here. Uh, we already have been playing a ton of Seizure. We've been playing some Mortalis. We've been playing some Iron Rule. Uh, and now we were approached last week by Wicked64, a SoundCloud rapper who's been in the game for about 13 years, been rapping for 10 Um Heard some of his stuff this week, man. Deep lyrics, deep, deep lyrics, man. And and you know something that I've uh, had the pleasure of getting to hear when being with my girlfriend is music like this um, that really get into the deep of mental health and whatnot, um, and and what people go through on a day to day basis. The first track we're gonna listen to by Wicked himself is "The Day I Die" uh, off his uh, on his SoundCloud. You can go check it out. Um, Wicked 64. Uh, so I'll go look for him on SoundCloud. But without further ado, let's play a little Wicked 64. And then when we come back, uh, reactions about the Halloween Horror Nights teaser with Matt and Mooch. Stay tuned. Someday you will get it. Someday you will understand that. Mama didn't raise no quitter, Papa didn't raise no fool, can't blame no booze, it was my choice and I chose to lose, gotta take more consideration in what I do, spend hangovers laying in bed, drinking grandma's soup under grandma's roof, 
got the boot like recruits on a cruise Going head strong against thousands of brutes But I still keep fighting, remain the resistance and but consistent, display my resilience Six million times, a million times Stronger than the kids that grew up like a did But it's different, you get into what you thought you wouldn't You sit there and wish that you didn't But you couldn't resist it So shit is how shit is, yeah, and it's shitty No kidding, now I'm sitting here thinking Until the day I die I will be fine I think back and I wish that I didn't fuck up this bad Maybe I'm just pissed at myself but I'll get over it Like as if there's no impact Shit don't bother me Apologies to everyone who just wanted me To be successful in everything I, me, myself wanted to be But I'm still doing what I wanna do I rap, I write, I produce I'm happy with it, I like it, I love it I feel like I'm putting my life to good use Am I, am I not, am I just wasting my time in this spot, will I ever be considered one of those guys you see on lock at the top, so I thought and I thought, but until the day I die, I will be fine. Man, 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 man. It'd be nice if I got the Discord up, huh? That'd be nice. It would be nice. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Nights of War Radio. Hope you guys enjoyed a Little Wicked 64. Now with me in studio in the eye of the storm, I got Mooch. And for the first time ever with anything of the Nights of Horror, we got Matt on the show. What's up, Matt? How you doing? <laughs> good. How about yourself? Doing pretty good, man. Now, first up, first and foremost, we are going to get down to business later on with our 2023 Best Maze Bracket. Uh, before we do that, we have to talk about uh, what just transpired today, and that is, of course, the new teaser that was released by Universal Studios themselves. Um, we know for the last week or two that we've gotten a lot of um, little teasers here and there for the Orlando event. Um, this door has been kind of shown to be shut off underground, keeping something in from getting released. Today, that door was released wide open. Um, after weeks of speculation as to what is in said door, we kind of got a, a, a brief glimpse of that um, for this tease. I don't know what this is exactly setting up. I have a few theories. I had read some stuff on Twitter today. I want to talk to you guys about it. Um, so we all, I'm assuming we all took a look at the... Uh, the teaser today, right? Obviously, did we get? A, I actually yeah. didn't. So you're gonna you did get not. An okay. honest reaction out of me. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna do our best to do what we can here. Um, I did this on purpose too. Okay. All right. Just so like genuine reactions. We're gonna see how this works. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. We're we're just gonna see how this works. This is gonna work well in our favor. I don't know. Maybe not. Is it white for you guys? No. No. Okay, you can see what I'm watching. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, can the stream see it? Oh, 
Stream can see it. I it. We're good. But stream can now hear it. All right. They can't see us, but we, they can hear us, so we can give our commentary as we're going. But yeah, we got, yeah, we got yeah. a janitor, which, which I'm assuming is in the Orlando Park. There's that sewer mm. we've been seeing. Sewer. Um in the Orlando teases. So I, what I liked about these cross promotions is they do a kind of back and forth from both parks. It's really cool. Um, and then here's here's our mysterious hallway where we're seeing our door. Now here's our door. Hmm. The textures look really good. There's the Florida entrance. Hmm. Now, if you look at the archway and the reflection, there's a freaking creature in that. I'm going to go back for you real quick. But you look at this archway right here, and there's a creature on the reflection of the wet floor of the archway, in place of the archway. Hmm. Now, there's a few theories we're going to talk about right now, but this was the overall tease. Um, what's being speculated at the moment um, is, of course, the fact that um, we might be getting something soon uh, as far as the, our first announcement for Halloween Horror Nights. There's a lot of things to take down in that teaser. Um, first and foremost, the creature-like substance that was in this cocoon. I read a few things today. I have my own theories. First and foremost, the first thing that I, that came to mind when I saw that creature was two things. Uh, one, Stranger Things, and two, uh, Alien. Um, yeah. Those are the first two things that came to mind. However, number one kind of put me at a crossroads right there because we've already seen every adaptation of Stranger Things. Um, so there's really, unless you do a season That's five... Cool. That, I mean, thus far, yeah. I mean, season five is currently being made right now, so I don't see season five happening this year. I don't even see it coming out this year. Um, so there's that. That that kind of shoves that away. Right. So that, that leaves yeah. Alien. Uh, <laughs> we do know an, a new Alien movie is getting released this year by uh, 20th Century Studios. Uh, it looks phenomenal. It looks like it's going back to the roots of Alien. Um, it could be a potential property. Alien versus predator is no shy of being at the event in the past uh and i know that was a shared ip with alien and predator but alien was technically still there so um yeah but first reactions what do you guys think this 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 kind of blob cocoon thing is you mind if i go first go ahead go ahead okay um so right off the bat sewer i'm thinking you know it you know pennywise the classic you know screaming in the sewer all the children mm -hmm. right seeing the doorway underneath with the light coming through also reminded me of it um as for the veins coming out of the doorway that's when i was like stranger things you know right and then one thing that kind of like drove me towards this other theory was the fact that this cocoon was like shaking okay and making these types of noises i know it's kind of common to hear these noises with like you know foreign alien like creatures and stuff like that but um so i play a lot of dead by daylight as you all know there's a map on there that's based around silent hill in some of these cages in the game there's these things that like shake every now and then if you walk by them and it kind of reminded me of that um and then towards the end where it's showing the main entrance, the sirens are going off. Right. Which is very, you know, reminiscent of Silent Hill for me. Silent Hill. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's funny you bring up Silent Hill because Silent Hill actually is celebrating, I think, a major 
uh, anniversary milestone this year. I, don't, I think it's like 25 or 30 years or something like that. Mm. Uh, and there's a lot that's going to be happening with the Silent Hill property pretty soon. A brand new movie's in the works. Um, they're remastering a lot of the fan favorite games and making a brand new game on top of that. So Amaze would just really kind of capitalize on all this uh, hype for Silent Hill, kind of doing a, a grand return after all these years. Um, and yeah, that was something that I did notice uh, the second watch around because you know I watched it real quick at work. But the second time, I actually got to hear those sirens. And yeah, you're right. What property, what horror movie does the sirens more the like the nuke sirens like Silent Hill does? You know, right. and, and that that kind of symbolizes something within that world of Silent Hill. Of course, of of you know, you have Pyramid Head, which is I think is one of the most coolest fucking characters of all time. Um, and then you have the nurses, who I think are freaking terrifying as well. Uh, yeah. We have seen Silent Hill at Halloween Horror Nights back in I think like 2012. Um, so it has been well over 10 years now since Silent Hill has been at the event. So I think it's, it more than ever, this is the time to capitalize it and bring it back if it is Silent Hill related. Um, Plus you were saying for the anniversary. Yeah. And, and it capitalizes on that anniversary date, which I think a lot of the uh, Silent Hill fan base and the, the cast and crew will really appreciate on that one. Um, Matt thoughts and theories of what, of what we just witnessed behind that, that the little teaser. When I first saw it, I was thinking, it also at least the initial teaser yeah. that little i think it was like a 10 second clip mm -hmm. of just the sewer and the screaming but then i started reading up on like other fan theories and then each little clip i guess if you want to call it little snippet mm -hmm. supposedly it's a rumor towards those mazes so like the janitor sweeping up the water someone said creature I don't put it past Orlando to bring a creature since they've already done something similar. That's right. And then the sewer, um, they work along Warner Brothers. So Hopefully. you never know. Fingers crossed. Stranger Things. Yeah. I could see them bringing Stranger Things season five. I was going to say. They've done early releases for that. So you never know. I just, I feel like, you know, with Stranger Things coming back to the event, I mean, if you were to do season five, there's just no way for me to kind of grasp on the fact that I'm going to be seeing something before I watch it. Like, right. and especially because this is supposed to be the final season of Stranger Things. So, you know, there's going to be probably a ton of spoilers, a ton of, I'm hoping, yeah. uh, and it's sad that I'm saying this, but I'm hoping we get a ton of death character, uh, character deaths, because I think those are always like the most memorable things in a show, especially yeah. when you love a character so much and then you like are literally crying because this character is dying or something like that. But, um, I mean, the show is so popular; it is so over right now that you know it 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 brought two fan bases and two different generations together. You know, you had your fan base and generations of the 80s right there mixed with the fan base of today's pop culture that look back at the 80s and stuff and really mm -hmm. brought those two fan bases together. And they really learned from each other of kind of kids being kids and the 80s pretty much. So, I mean, I, I loved what they did with it. I just I don't know if you can bring it to Horror Nights this year, though, at, at this point, because of the fact that season five does not come out till next year. So and I know how really. You know, I know how tight Netflix is on that. The Duffer Brothers are on that because, especially with this being the last season, who knows what's gonna going to happen? So, I saw something on Twitter today that kind of piqued my interest with that cocoon, uh, black gooish cocoon thing, um, and I can't remember the user off the top of my head. So forgive me, but if this is yours, uh, take credit for it because this is where I read it from. A quiet place. Oh, the black cocoon like thing kind of looks similar to like these things when they like nest and shit like that. Yeah. Um, but more ironically, when you see the thing kind of break out and you see the teeth a little bit or the mouth of that thing a little bit, it kind of looks similar to the quiet place. Um, the quiet <laughs> place has now been long speculated uh, to be coming to the event this year. Uh, I think it's no greater time to bring it to the event than right now, especially with the new Quiet Place Day 1 coming out, uh, I believe, this month or next month already. Um, so, you know, you have the summer to watch the film, and boom, live the experience right at Halloween Horror Nights, you know, and, that, and that's a great marketing point. They've done it many times. Um, they did it with Ghostbusters. Um, 
and all that stuff. So, you know, I mean, they've done it. They've marketed movies and 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 the and the theme itself. Why not a quiet place? You know, you can you can capitalize on those first two films and whatnot. Um, I don't know. I I, I want to say I want to kind of turn my attention now to the the what happened and what we see at the end of that of that promo, and that is the reflection of some kind of monster like creature. It looks so nasty, but it's like you have the archway, and then the reflection is like the creature forming the archway, and it looked like hmm. to me. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't remember what they're called, but like you've seen them in like fucking games, like Diablo and shit. They look like little fucking yellow portals with like a black strip down the middle. It's like a serpent eye kind of thing, but they're they're kind of like portals and shit. That's what it kind of looked like. That were each pillar. So are we going to be taking to different portals? You know, I know Orlando does something. They do different stuff with, of course, icons. So they tie their event yeah. more to as a whole, um, which I highly suggest if anyone get a chance to go out there, check out their event. It is fucking phenomenal. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I there could be a ton of things. There's a lot of rumors going around. Um, on top of that, we're looking at this from both, you know, I mean, we got to imagine – if this was a joint announcement, this is going to be mostly IP based, if not all IP based. There is very rarely that we share any originals with Orlando and Hollywood. Uh, mm -hmm. That was another hint, though, that it was an original character. That it was? Yes. Hmm. That could be interesting, a new turning point for the, you what, know what? what they need right now. I, I could probably see it being creature. Because aren't they building a bunch of like like a Universal Monster Land or something? They are uh, in Epic Universe in Orlando. They're building a whole brand new theme park, and with that, a new land themed to the Universal Monsters. Um, look like they're being reimagined. Uh, we are following that one very carefully. Uh, I know that about every month. Universal has been teasing and announcing the land, and then the next day they'll drop a, a detailed video on it. Uh, so far, I think they've released for um, Celestial Park, um, How to Train Your Dragon, and Super Nintendo World. Mm. Uh, I'm still waiting for Ministry Magic and the the Dark Universe. That's what they're calling it. Mm. Um, so I, we've been keeping up with it, at least with that on the channel for the Dark Universe because that is another representation of a year-round haunt, essentially. Um, and isn't that – I mean – to think about that, I mean, you guys, you guys been, you guys been scaring for some time now. To think about things like that, where we're getting year round now. I mean, it went from just like a, a, a dark ride in Disneyland called the Haunted Mansion, to, you know, all these other events and these things popping up. I remember even going on freaking dark rides at Carnival rides. Now we're seeing these things like in full scale, full mass production. Like, did you ever like think twenty five, like, thirty thousand a night? You know, dude, yeah, hundred percent. Like, no, not like I'm not even like it's for real though. But did you ever think like ten years ago when you were looking into this world and you saw this world? Did you ever think we would end up where we are right now, getting year round haunts, getting no. seasonal haunts, getting all of mm. this shit, dude? It's it's just mm -mm. it blows my mind constantly, man. Like, it, it, it's, it's it's very insane. cool to see, you know. Yeah. And it, it, at the same time, it kind of makes me feel bad that, you know, day one, first gen monsters, like some of them aren't able to see this, you know? Wow. And they were the ones who like started it. Yeah. But also, did they expect to go from three days of scaring till to 30 days uh, of scaring? A month, yeah. And then now two months and then now year round. Yeah. So. It, 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 it freaking trips me out, man. It's that, very cool. uh, you know, next year, on top of the Epic Universe and a whole land dedicated to uh, that opening mm -hmm. up, we are also getting in Las Vegas on the West Coast the year-round Horror Unleashed. Um, it's okay, Mooch. You can yet let out the yawn. I do it all the time on camera. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's insane to even think that. I mean, we haven't really gotten much news for that. I'm hoping after they really go full force on announcing everything for Epic Universe, they focus all the attention on uh horror unleashed because guys th they're building already the, the, the buildings are almost up i think they're already up it, it's just a matter of just starting to get electrical and down there and then just the basic indoor stuff oh yeah all the, that stuff, they're you know? up 
They're up yeah. already. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of getting inside and building. Uh, as to what's going to be there, it could be a wide variety of things. I mean, it, it, there's a lot to look forward to in the future of, of the haunt world. And, and oh, I yeah. feel like every year it's only getting bigger. I mean, you know, we talked about it last week, Paul. I mean, the return to Dark Harbor, That's that was a huge one for, for everyone. We, we weren't expecting that one. Um, you know, Knott's going on yeah. another great year after the, after they celebrated the 50th to see what's going to come this year. It's going to be amazing. Um, and I'm even excited to see what Six Flags pulls out of the, the bag this year, man, because, you know, last year they were stepping it up a little bit with some IPs. Yeah. And, oh, you yeah. know, I mean, I mean, they weren't, let's be honest, they weren't the greatest, but I feel like the first year they're going to learn and hopefully just come back even stronger. But I will say this, they got the Conjuring before Horror Nights did. That's that's pretty much what, how it was for um, Scream Break, you know. Shout yeah. out to all the Scream Break guys. Um, but I remember going the first year, and it just, you know, production just wasn't there, and you know, everything was just kind of like slapped together. But you know, it's, it's the characters made it what it was. You know, like just seeing them, interacting with them, and just having fun overall made it a great time, even though it just was kind of like all slapstick together. You know. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, following up into 2023 or 24, sorry, um, yeah, um, just production was great, slider show, fantastic, very cool, you know, makeup always fantastic. There, I love yeah, the job. 3D prosthetic, 2D makeup, it's very cool. 3D, yeah, you know, <laughs> 3D, you gotta get a wrestling reference in there. <laughs> got to. It's just 3D, bro. Get the tables. Yeah. If Sammy were here, he would have probably yelled, get the tables, you know. <laughs> just, that's just the kind of guy he is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I we got to look very closely now coming into uh, – we're actually – now we're – I can't believe we're already halfway through May. Um, mm. Going into June, <laughs> little by little, we should start getting more announcements for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, and other haunt news while we're on the subject, uh, not Scary Farm. Just got announced that they're going to have a panel at Midsummer Scream this year again. Yeah. Uh, so that should be exciting. They had they they returned last year with the panel uh, for the fiftieth to kind of tease some stuff. Um, I'm hoping they come out with some stuff this year. Um, they're probably going to announce another freaking announcement event. We'll probably be there. They'll probably release more tickets again. <laughs> it was it was oversold last time. I'll be I'll be a hundred percent honest. That's just my opinion though. Um, but I had a great but time. It, but it was uh, good. It was a fun time. It really was. Um, yeah. it was a very fun time. It it was something unique. Um, to see that back again, that was fun. Uh, but yeah, should be fun. I'm excited. Midsummer Scream is already looking stacked as it is. So, uh, what are your guys' favorite moments and, and just things that that are just fun for you guys that weekend? Like, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot for me. I get to see a lot of people. You know, I get to. There's always a, a a lot of unique vendors out there. Some great panels. What are you laughing at? Oh, I'm just thinking about like what what's fun about Midsummer. <laughs> and he just starts laughing. And, and no, the reason why I laughed is I kid you not, it's just talking. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much it's all the it whole is, time. Really. A lot of talking, catching up. Talking, lot of catching, catching up. up, walking, and watching panels. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm That's fucking, my favorite part, just catching up with people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like for sure. I'm running everywhere, and like every now and then, I see these fuckers walking by. Like, hey, what's going on? Be like, yeah, hey, I'm going to this panel later. That's yep, really you're it. always running by us. Like, it hey. is. It, no, we are. We're just we're Hi. trying to get Bye. to <laughs> point A, point. I mean, last year, I feel like was our most tech heavy year. We had four cameras going, bro. We had B roll. I remember crazy. that. We had people being yeah. at different panels. Like, it is starting to get in- insane every single year, and I'm always saying, like, how am I going to top next year? <laughs> Five I cameras. May have figured that out. Uh, but it's a little pricey. I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but it will happen one year. Um, now, when we uh, when we get back from break, we're gonna we're gonna do our bracket for the 2023 best maze of the year from uh, four haunts uh, that we uh, all agreed upon. Obviously, Shacktober, uh, Hayride, Knots, and Halloween Horror Nights. Um, but for now, please enjoy our good friends over at Iron Rule. Uh, the last of the song of this uh, EP that they dropped, Soul Death, on Spotify right now. Everybody knows and loves the Iron Death as of last week, man. They were banger for the show. This one's Dang called it. Dream in Fear, and uh, 
another thing that's being speculated for nights this year, Nightmare on Elm Street. So, hey. Mm. This one goes out to my boy, Freddy. Dream and fear. <laughs> Iron rule. Let's check it out. <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, back here on Nights of Horror Radio, Dream and Fear, Iron Rule. It's a great EP. It's a great EP overall. I mean, I I don't think there was not one song I was disappointed in. Good, good song for sure. That was uh, I, the lyrics in that one really spoke to me on that one. To be honest with you, <laughs> they really did. You could understand that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I have you guys talking in one ear, and then I have me going listening in another. <laughs> so it was like. You know, it was when we were talking on break. I could barely understand you guys because I was listening to the music because it's so loud in my headset. So. <laughs> it is what it is. That's radio business for you, right? Yeah. Um. So last week I pulled up the idea of a bracket tournament for the best um maze of 2023. Now, Paul was on board immediately, but we couldn't do a bracket without a third person. So we had to contact somebody. And that somebody actually contacted us saying he was very interested on coming on the show, and we were very excited to have him on the show. And uh, again, we were shocked. <laughs> uh, no, I actually, something, dude. I, I don't think I, I honestly wasn't shocked because I knew when I suggested a concept of a live talk show of some sorts. Because I remember we were talking about wrestling talk show, we were talking about all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You said you would come on because this is a lot different than what I normally do with Miles Horror and stuff. So. Um, no, it's just great to have you on. I thought we could do something fun um, and something that will uh, have a lot of fun with the audience as well. But uh, we have all of our mazes locked, loaded, ready to go. Um, and yeah, here we are. Here's our bracket right here. So I'm going to start the tournament up. Actually, what I'm going to do first is uh, 
how did I do it last time? I, I remember I was mixing them up a little bit, but um, there we go on the participants right here. So what we're going to do is this is our list. We have 27 mazes on this list, as you can see. Um, so we have uh, a lot to, to break down, check out, all that fun stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up a couple times because, uh, you know, some of the mazes are going to have buy rounds just because of the number of participants that are in it. But um, we're going to mix it up a little bit, and we're going to go from there. You guys ready? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, that being said, uh, let me move this bracket over. Put it right there. All right, cool. Just because I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tweak some stuff for stream. We're still new to this, okay? Um, all right, let's start the tournament up. So, uh, round one, we're gonna do the Universal Monsters Unmasked versus the Grimoire. Um, that's gonna be a no-brainer for me. That's gonna go to Grimoire. Same for me. Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, that was, so is yeah. this for 2023? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, for me, I just, I felt Universal Monsters Unmasked was like a redheaded stepchild last year. It just didn't hit, you know? And it was one of those things where I was just like, eh. He could have done better. Yeah. It just it felt all over the place. It really did, and it was just one of those things where I was just like, mm, "Okay." It wasn't terrible. So yeah, it was. It wasn't terrible. It was just cluttered. Yeah, it was. It was very cluttered. Uh, so, but Grimoire for me, uh, from the moment I walked into it, I don't care who's casted in it. It's visually stunning. It, it wasn't it, Invisible Man in it for like one scene. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. So every time the left field. It, <laughs> no, listen. Every time Universal only has Invisible Man for one scene, like like his character deserves so much more to me. Oh, that's my favorite. That's my favorite 100%. Universal monster. No, one hundred percent. I agree with you on that. I just feel like he needs more. <laughs> no, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So but yeah, I just I really think that, um, you know, it was one of those things where I was just like, yeah, damn, man, come on. Universal Monsters, put some respect on the name. Grimoire, however, gave me 100% faith that they can do a Twilight Zone Tower of Terror maze, though. 100%. If, if Knott's yeah. can pull it off, anyone can pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> and Knott's is like the OGs, so, you know. Yeah. There's that. Uh, next round, Hellbilly Halloween at the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride versus the Chilling Chambers, and that's going to mm. be another no-brainer. That's, that's Chilling Chambers for me. Yeah, Chilling Chambers. <laughs> That's so, just so, and weren't you saying it like wasn't finished? I can't speak. Okay, either way, um, <laughs> fantastic, fucking fantastic maze right there. It was a good, uh, a great uh, walk through memory lane. It really was. Yeah. I mean. Um, I just absolutely walked through and, you know, every time I'd walk through, I'd just be focusing on certain areas other, you know, more than others, just cause I wanted to see all the Easter eggs. I wanted to see everything and it did not disappoint, you know, like it was everything I wanted in an anniversary house, you know, to really pay tribute all those years for, you know, what, what those, mazes brought to the business you know i mean they they really um they really meant a lot over the years to a lot of people different generations all generations so to get a glimpse of the past all the way till now was really freaking cool so yeah chilling chambers for me is is one of those mazes where um i hope they it wasn't just a one-year thing i really hope they bring that back uh and and just you know i don't even care if it's the same thing i just want to see all that nostalgia again right that's another maze that was just a bunch of shit thrown together, but worked. But you so, know, it, it, was, it, it was, was organized. It was organized yeah. to throw together because it was one of those mazes where, because it was an anniversary house, you could just throw a bunch of shit in there and people mm -hmm. would just lose their shit. Like fans like me, fans like Paul, even yourself, you're a fan at heart, you know? And mm -hmm. it's one of those things where even when you were probably, you saw a lot of this shit and you were just like, holy fuck, man, I haven't seen that in years. Dude, it's I almost started see. tearing up when I heard the, the doll factory music. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, I mean, that's an iconic maze right there. I remember seeing that as a kid walking in the park during day, day ops and just mm -hmm. like being like terrified of just the facade of it, you know? And 
<laughs> you know, that's just just to go through that again. I never thought in a million years I'd be able to go through Doll Factory again, and and they brought that to life for me. I never see, thought I'd be able see, to go like, to any of those mazes again. Like Chambers is a prime example of like what, like Universal was probably thinking what they wanted to do for Unmasked. Unmasked. You know, I love Chambers because it's it's a lot of things, but every single section is of that thing. Yeah. You know, like you weren't going to see Bride of Frankenstein in the front room and then three quarters of the way towards the end, you know? Yeah. Every, everything had its own section throughout the whole thing. And it was just going through the timeline from start to finish. Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. It was, it was awesome. And, and, you know, for me, uh, I never got to see Asylum in person, but I've loved that maze because I've watched POVs of it constantly uh, I would hear stories about it, and to get yeah. to have that moment of kind of walking through it, even if it was a little piece of it, you know, it was just cool to see that fucking facade and mm -hmm. to walk out in that courtyard and just see the fucking asylum. And I'm just like, no fucking way they just did that right now. Um, I know Glow had an Easter egg in it as well uh, on the monitors. That was really cool. She's one of the more iconic nurses that 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 scared inside of the 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 maze over the years and i'm pretty sure there was a lot more iconic people that came out of that i know there was a few that came out of there but um you know and there was a lot of great easter eggs of referring to the past for people that you know that passed on and everything that i thought was really fucking cool mm -hmm. um you know so if you're a hardcore fan this was the maze right here you know even if you were a casual fan just to look around at stuff this was the maze um, this maze always had a, a long line every night that we went, but we made sure we went through it at least once or twice. You know, I mean, it was that good of a maze. All right. Diesel's pumpkin patch versus wax works. Wax. This one to me is a hard one. I'm going to go diesel's pumpkin patch. It stepped up a lot this year. Or last year, should I say. Like a lot. From year one to year two, much better improvement. A lot more fun for me, too. Now I'm the tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Damn. we needed the third. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's going to end one way. This one's tough. It was fun. I, I got to give it a pumpkin patch. Damn, all right. Diesel's Pumpkin Patch. Why Why did you like Diesel's Pumpkin Patch over Waxworks? The aesthetic is amazing. It's it's nothing like what you would find in California. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. And also just the talent was kick-ass. That is true. Uh, I, I think they were pretty aggressive, too, in, in certain areas. Um, I really liked the barn scene. That was felt the most aggressive area for me, but... Yeah, there was a lot of cool little areas in that in that part, and I, yeah. like I said, it was just a much better improvement for me. What you laughing at, homie? Kane, <laughs> if Wax doesn't win, then I'm gonna scream. Uh, right now, right now, he just put well, in, insert screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, I was rooting for it. I, I love, I love that maze. I yeah. like wax works. Don't get me wrong. It's just I now I'm going like I'm not going sor sorely based on popularity here. I'm going sorely based on my experiences. Right. Yeah. And I'm being biased and I'm being fair. Like I know we 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 chose Nod's mazes in the beginning, but what they were going up against, it was legit my opinion. I thought this maze was better than that maze. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Room thirteen versus Cinema Slasher. Now I know. Hold on. Now, I know before we get into this, I already know what the clear winner is going to be on this one. It's it's a no-brainer. Okay, it's obviously room 13. It's obviously room 13. Um, no, but... Screaming, crying. <laughs> I want to say this about room 13. <laughs> Outside of the music, which I know that was an issue for this year, um, it was a fucking beautiful maze to look at. Yes. Uh, very much so. Very beautiful maze. Like I would love to have shot a short film in there. That's how very well decorated it was. Um, that being said, Cinema Slasher was way better. I love All around Slasher. Cinema Slasher. Yeah. It just, that was another anniversary house in a way. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. Paid, they paid a lot of tribute to the past. So, you know, that was one of my favorite yeah. mazes and it, it always delivered. The effects were great. I love that opening effect. 
in the in the lobby with the black yes. lights and everything. Yes. That is such yes. such a good effect. And now Knotts is bringing smells. So yeah, that's I mean, even better too. That was cool. Cinema was hella fun. That was to work one in. thing I like wasn't too fond of in Chambers, Sweet. but Chambers was still fantastic. One well, Chambers, that's a different story. It's right, just right. Like shit. <laughs> Cinema Slasher goes crazy. It does. There was a lot of crazy moments. I'd, ah, I'd look around. Slasher was so cool, man. There man. was a lot of moments where I where I was in the maze, and I'm like, I can't believe they they put this in the maze. Like, I'm glad yeah. they did that because you know I don't feel like a lot of haunts haunts push the boundaries anymore. So what one thing too is we like we wall. yes I know we were like ten feet away, but Carnival really got along with a lot of the talent. Yeah, because we're that, we're that basically matter. next door. <laughs> um, but. Either way, they loved us, but we really loved them. You know, like that, that maze was banging for sure. If Rule Thirteen had a different soundtrack, my vote would have been different. Yeah, I'm hoping for the 24 uh, year that they maybe update that. If not, it is what it is. I mean, I know Knotts is already probably busy. Um, I know they potentially have two mazes coming in after the, um, you know, the exit of the two mazes of last year. That being the um, the depths and dark entities so that's two slots that just opened up right there um so i'm hoping that they'll fit some room in to maybe work on a more um audio a better audio uh package for that entire maze that actually maybe tells a story or has different music in different rooms um either way i just hope there's different ambiance in that maze next or uh, this year um all right i i see hope for that maze for sure i do too there, there's a lot of stuff you can tweak and improve on for year two uh and more years to come and and knots is famous for doing that i mean look what they did with dark ride you know they constantly kept right. that that right that maze fresh so um all right back to shacktoberfest it's my understanding looney is in the chat so we'll, yeah, yeah we'll tread lightly here <laughs> or, or or we'll just be brutally honest, you know. I mean, who cares? I mean, Dark Harbor's coming back anyway, so um, it's not like it matters anymore. The Gray Ghost versus Dead Man's Wharf, and it's the Gray Ghost, hundred percent. Mm. There's just no competition. No, I... there. Oh, I might be on Matt's side here. Over Dead Man's Wharf, dude. Gray Ghost was like the one on the ship, though, bro. Like that gave me more Dark Harbor vibes, and that gave me a sign right there that hey. Dark Harbor can come back and look where we are in 2024. I I understand. I love that it was on the ship. That was my favorite part. But holy cow, Dead Man's Wharf is very appealing. It was a very nice looking <laughs> maze. It was a long maze on top of that. It was very good looking. Talent, great. Loved it, you know? Um, lighting, music. Obviously, most of the music was from the stage anyways, but just the the setting. I felt like I was there, you know, right. inside that boat. Okay. Finding different channels through it, you know. And, yeah, I just, I really loved it, you know. All right. I thought that Dead Man's Wharf was a huge improvement this year. Um, so, and that was another maze that I will happily say that gave me more hope and more Dark Harbor vibes right there. Um, it seemed like this was almost like a test audience. What did we just get? Did we get something? I just heard it. What did we get? Another follow from Ben from 2002. I appreciate that. Thank you, Ben. Heck yeah. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> appreciate you. Thank you for following. Um, but it yeah. looks like he was a cinema worker. Yeah, I seen that. He, cool. I, I shouted him out earlier, so that was pretty cool. Um, but to me, it seemed like Dead Man's Wharf. Uh, they obviously improved on the footprint of it, uh, and that gave me more Dark Harbor hopes right there. It seems like to me, looking back at it now, what if this past year of Shacktoberfest was almost a test to see if Dark Harbor can still work? It probably was. And, you know, judging by, you know, word of mouth and hearing from all of our other friends, it sounded like they had a ph phenomenal year, you know? Right. Going on one of our off days, luckily they had a Haunter's Night there. Um, just the whole vibe of the event, you know, 
constant people walking through, you know, midway. Right. People waiting in lines, you know, to get in mazes again. Um, yeah. Just definitely an improvement, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, bigger floor print, obviously, yeah. or they maximized yeah. the space that they had. It really, though, it honestly, and now, look, like I said, looking back on it, it sounded like, and it looked like that this was just an early test to see if Dark Harbor can work. And if that's the case, corporate, bro, fucking O. Oh, I did not see yeah. that one fucking coming. <laughs> yeah. I was like, God damn, you guys are pulling some Frankenstein monster experiments behind the scenes without us even knowing <laughs> until the fucking next year, huh? This was the plan all along. Let them um, cook. Let them cook. Let let them cook for sure, man. But uh all right. Well you guys you guys you guys clearly chose Dead Man's yeah. Wharf over Grey Ghost. I'm not changing my answer though, even after on, saying all that. On paper, Grey Ghost sounds amazing. Yes. Being able to utilize the ship and bring that to life to me is a challenge. Not just one section of the ship either, like how feast and those you know, are lullaby. Or whatever. It <laughs> was throughout the whole fucking boat. <laughs> I, to me, and you guys obviously have a different experience with the boat than, than maybe I do. Obviously you guys have gotten to, you know, obviously work there. Um, I've spent the night like once (laughs) walked it a couple of times. Um, but to me walking through the maze, uh, on the ships, even during dark Harbor in 2019. And we'll talk about this next week. Uh, with another special guest that we're having next week that we'll announce later on. Um, to me, it was always a fucking creepy and eerie feeling walking through that ship because of that ship's history, because mm-hmm. you know the ship's haunted. Um, you know, it, I think I'm a little bit more comfortable with it now after doing that Grey Ghost uh, ghost tour, um, ghost investigation. That was right. a lot of fun. And to kind of get more info about the activity on the boat of what, what, where it's at post COVID compared to where it was pre COVID. Like it almost felt like from what I got from information wise, like the spirits just felt abandoned that, that, that entire time they were, they were just, there was nobody, you know, like the boat, the ship was closed for like what, two, three years. Three years, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it was in the verge of, of getting sunk, you know, and just getting shut down permanently um thank god the the city of long beach stepped up but yeah there's just something about that boat dude walking on those mazes and i can't wait to do it again at dark harbor um but gray ghost brought back that dark harbor feel for me and that was the reason why i loved the the entire event that night i was just like this is fucking and then like literally an hour later uh i guess plumbing flooded the last part where you're actually in the gray ghost i was like well at least well at least it's more realistic man now more than ever (laughs) So I, I really think, and obviously one can hope um, that they utilize somehow the submarine, the Russian sub that's out front. Yeah, that, that could that, be a tough storyline. I just think you could add it somehow into its own thing, <laughs> like like for a maze, you know? Where do, how do you even move that, though, with a crane or... No, 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 no. Like, no, like, just... like, build a story off of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You just the entrance right into there. its own you. maze and stuff. I was like, you're going to move a fucking World War II submarine out of the no. location it's been at no. for years? I don't know. Um, um, Cold War, I think. I'm hoping, uh, before we get back, a little side note real quick. I'm hoping this brings a lot more money back to Dar- uh, to the Queen overall. Oh, yeah. um, we heard in the press conference and stuff that it has generated a ton of money from outside tourists in the mm-hmm. past. Uh, so that's that's really good news to hear, and I'm hoping that um, it generates money for the queen overall. Queen's in dire need of some some attention. I was walking that that ship, and just to see the outside and the inside, there's a lot of things that need to be refurbished and, and repaired. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this money will go towards a lot of those repairs and and refurbishments and speed up the process of making that boat look in pristine again. So, all right, trick or treat at LA Haunted Hayride versus Dark Entities. And not scary from here's the problem with both of these mazes. <laughs> Problems. <laughs> They're both not that good. I disagree. Dark Entities was hitting last year. It was good. I, it was. I listen, I've always been the first to, and you know this more than anyone. I've always been the me and Sammy have always been the first to step up for that maze. Well, everyone talks shit about it. We've always stepped up to the plate for that right. maze. I, will, I I regret not doing my 24 visits a night 
challenge that I could have taken a, advantage <laughs> of, but you know, that's that's neither here or, nor there. Um, but I don't know. I mean, trick or treat to me was something that was like you're going door to door, and it's like classic Halloween again. Like that's kind of fun. It was interactive. I remember it now. Yeah, you used to push the doorbell, and something would jump out at you. you know? Yeah, I you thought that candy. was. I, th- I think it that that was really cool. That whole aspect. Um, the setting was nice. Act, acting was, you know, pretty decent. You know, but but if, but if you wanted entities, to see me get scared, Dark Entities is the one you would take me. Through. Entities, I was really happy over because it was an alien style maze. They, you know, they missed on the opportunity of the special ops guns. I'm just saying that right now. I yeah. think it. Let's be honest. I it would have worked. Years. It would have worked a lot better in there than in Bloodline. Yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Because you have a few, like a lot of the, a lot of the talent in that maze are mostly just kind of either infected or kind of just there for ambiance, you know. So a lot of it's right. animatronics. You could have made it work with the guns. Yeah. Yeah. I Especially feel like towards the beginning of the maze, they were there to keep control of the the outbreak. Yeah. Right. And then at the end, it's just. All hell, loose, bro- all so. hell has broken exactly. loose. My favorite, my favorite chaos. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we kept we kept hearing compliments like every every other night about that maze. You know, they were hitting. They, they were, were going hard that. this year, man. It was the final year. They wanted yeah. to go out with a bang. Yeah. So what are we voting? Dark entities over trick or treat? You two? Probably gonna dark say dark entities. entities. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give my vote to dark entities too. Why not? All right. <laughs> Why is waxworks on twice? Did I put waxworks on twice? I guess I did. Probably did. When did I do that? Did I do that at all? Did I really do that? That makes me... Is this going to mess up everything else? No, I mean, hopefully I think I just drag into one. I I think there is. Yeah, number eight is the first one. And then you scroll down to... I think it's it's Uh, past past 19. What what was that one? 22? Yeah, that's the one we want to take out. Yeah. save what do we put there instead <laughs> uh i could take i could put tear tram there hmm. yeah i think you could or i could just give chucky a buy round because whoever it goes up against next it's not going to pass i can promise you that cats are fighting outside <laughs> again <laughs> let's give chucky the buy okay chucky got the buy round. all right <laughs> All right, let's pick it up from here then. All right, uh, Last of Us versus Monsteros. Oof. Monsteros. I really liked Monsteros for being very original. I just didn't care for Last of Us. See, you're a big movie guy. I understand that. I'm a big video game guy over anything. That too. I didn't get it because obviously I didn't play. I was watching you play. You could have watched but the show and you would have like, still understood it. I don't know. A lot I of know. people said it was no. Listen, a lot of people said it was great. You know, the, the whole setting I thought was great. I I thought the setting of that maze was great, but Monstros is very original. Like there was nothing out there like it. You know, that's that's like my main, you know, nail in the coffin. At this point. I didn't get scared of Last of Us, and I got scared of Monstros. So, I uh, I geeked out over the Last of Us because <laughs> I know you're hurting about that one. I am because Last of Us, in my opinion, was the greatest maze of all time. I, 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 you could fight me on that. I don't give a fuck. But I, I am you sh- standing. You should have had more. You should have had more movie and video. Just game because friends. Monstros made it to the second round, which I know I'm still gonna lose it. I'm voting for Chucky. <laughs> Who knows? And know. I'm not voting Chucky. So. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> anyway, Last of Us was a masterpiece. <laughs> they fucking trans- transferred a lot of the game to the real life. I loved it. Um, I loved the show. Love the IP, the property. Great storytelling. Um, and I got to meet the, I got to meet fucking Troy Baker that night. So that was a memorable experience <laughs> for me. That's that's really cool. That was really fucking cool. I got to have a fucking drink next to Troy Baker. I'm like, I'm fucking cool, bro. I have a Jack and Coke. I'm next to Troy Baker. This guy fucking voiced the Joker, bro, in Arkham Origins, bro. 
Like Tro- Troy Baker as in High School Musical, or that's Troy Bolton, number one. Oh. I tried. I tried to make it funny. It didn't work. Uh, <laughs> Troy Baker is a voice actor. All right. <laughs> we'll just move on from there, I guess, because uh, Monster that's, clearly that's is the me. winner. Midnight Mortuary <laughs> versus the Hayride. Uh, Midnight Mortuary. Yeah. Midnight 100%. Mortuary. 100%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, I, they had this hallway that had like just random lights popping up. Yes, that was that dope. was cool. Yes. Yeah, and for me, the hayride just feels like it's just not the same anymore. Like, I feel like there's a lot of promises that when you see them get delivered, it's not what your expectation was. It's just the not so, right. It's not the right setting for the hayride. Yeah, I'll just say that they need to go back to the old LA Zoo. That setting in 2019 yeah. is yes. sick as fuck, bro. Um, I work for them. So I got to work the hayride back in 21. During for that time, days. no, for a couple weeks, um, it was cool. It was very cool. <laughs> the area that we were in, um, we were the last area of the ride. The clowns. I just I can't escape. This is I think this is year seven. Clown, who knows? Seven. Seven. Yeah, that's um, also the year uh, you probably were sick of Rob Zombie by the first week. I hated that shit. <laughs> you Char- hated it. you hated it. He had to hear the same four songs for every like every night, <laughs> like six hours every night. Yeah, for five years I've listened to the same song. Welcome to the carnival. Every night. Oh, that's yes. what you meant. Yeah, every yeah, thirty yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt that. I felt that too. But I enjoyed that a little more. That's funny. No. It, it was a setting. <laughs> I can't listen to those two songs anymore. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, I, feel I that. believe it. I believe it. All right, Mooch is already out in this next one, uh, at least for one of them. So I already know what Mooch is going to vote for um, because he didn't get to go through the other one. That's true. Uh, Exorcist Believer versus Stranger Things. Now, I wasn't a fan of the movie Exorcist Believer, and I watched it after I went through the maze. So going through the maze, I didn't know what I was going to walk through. The only thing I had knowledge of is the trailers for Exorcist Believer, and those caught my attention. Um, hundred percent. My opinion: the maze was a lot better than the movie. And I know Matt is a big fan. I think you're <laughs> at this point. I just have to say, you might just be a David Gordon Green fan, and I can suggest you a lot of great work that he's done in the past. You should, and I'll watch it. Um, but you just have to be a David Gordon Green fan. You just have to like, cause you you're one of the only people that I know liked Halloween Ends. You're one of the only people that I know liked Exorcist Believer. Like, See, and I don't follow directors. I just like what I like. Yeah, and, and all those movies that you've liked are from David Gordon Green. Like, with Danny McBride as an executive producer and writer as well. So, yes, we're talking the Danny McBride. <laughs> Matt's, Matt, Matt's mind right now is like, so? <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, I don't care. <laughs> Eastbound and Down, bro. You ever seen that show? You're a baseball guy. Yes. Yeah. David, oh, yeah. Gordon, David Gordon Green has directed a lot of episodes of that. Um, well, I'll start watching all his stuff then. <laughs> but I, I, if I have to go off what I thought as far as what was better for me, I, I honestly, I have to go Exorcist Believer. That scared the shit out of me more than anything. I love the 80s. See, this one's tough you for me. You can't tear the 80s away from me. <laughs> I love Stranger Things. They could have done a lot better with Stranger Things. Yes. Especially after seeing freaking Orlando's version. Yes. Like, they got Eddie on the trailer. <laughs> mm. but, but yeah, Exorcist, 100%. All right, Exorcist is advancing on to the next round. <laughs> all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> He's like, all right, I'll go fuck myself. Uh, this is going to be an easy one. Evil Dead Rise over Pirate's Cove. I'm going Evil Dead Rise for sure. It's a no-brainer. Pirates Cove just didn't hit this year. Which one was Pirates Cove again? That was at Shacktober. It was the pirate theme. That was one. you go on the pirate ship, right? Yeah. I think the ship looks cool aesthetic wise to like have as like just a, a prop, but like that maze didn't do anything for me. And I want to go Pirates Cove. Over Evil Dead Rise. Yeah. How? The aesthetic of being able to walk through the brig and everything. Yeah. 
And then as a talent, being able to like spot places you want to scare. <laughs> There's just not, not to mention multiple then, okay. connected boo holes. You scare right. somebody on this side, you run through the center of the maze because it like loops around. You could just run through middle and get the same person like 30 seconds and later. Also, the fact that Evil Dead was pretty much just rethemed in a couple rooms. Mm-hmm. From hotel to Evil Dead. Was... Let's be fair, okay? Evil Dead was rethemed to hotel, then rethemed back to Evil Dead. Okay, well, we never got to see the original Evil Dead plans, so that's hotel what it would have been, right? <laughs> but we saw Evil, or we saw Hotel before we saw Evil Dead, so. Yeah, I just thought it was a dead giveaway when you walked in and you walked in, you saw the fucking tub in Horror Hotel. Saw her coming like, out of the tub. I was like, "This is Evil Dead." <laughs> I'm going to see this in the trailer. Um, yeah. I don't know. Evil Dead Rise was just a, a great movie overall, so I think I really enjoyed that aspect of things. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I haven't seen Evil Dead, so. The new one's really good. Um, I can't wait till they ma- – they're making two more, I think. They have two more slated to oh, go. Yeah. So, yeah. Sam Raimi wrote, wrote off Bruce Campbell. They wrote off on him. So, I'm excited to see where they take the Evil Dead franchise. Make cool. it scary again. But I do like me some Ash. If Ash were to ever come back, I'd freaking watch it in a heartbeat. <laughs> Ash is a great character. He's goaded. All right. So Evil Dead Rise did not advance on Pirates Cove did. That's Pirates a, Cove. That's a shocker to me, really. <laughs> um, all right. Let's go on to our next round. And then after this round, we're going to take a short break, short music break real quick, play some Seizure. Um, but, yeah. All right. Bloodline was our buy winner versus the Grimoire. Um if we were talking Bloodline Year One, I would choose Bloodline because I thought it was actually a little bit fun with the guns. If we're talking Bloodline last year, got to give it to Grimoire still. Grimoire. Grimoire. It's as simple as that. They need to redesign that maze to be more sufficient for just a walkthrough story rather than it was a game. Mm-hmm. Um, so that needs to really go back on the chopping board, see what's up. Chilling Chambers versus Diesel's Pumpkin Patch. I got to go Chilling Chambers. Chilling Chambers. Chambers, <laughs> Chambers always takes it, bro. Come on. Ooh. Chambers. So many. A good one. All right. So many fantastic Easter eggs. Mesmer versus Cinema Slasher. I yeah. liked I, Mesmer was very unique when I first saw it. Last year was my first time ever walking through Mesmer. And I got to go Mesmer over Cinema. Mesmer's just visually stunning. But Even cinema, if there was no talent in there, was, yeah. Mesmer was really good. I'm going cinema, though. It's just, and that's where my love for movies comes. That's where cinema stole my heart, was my love for movies. I I got to pick cinema. I loved Mesmer. Mesmer's Mesmer, fantastic. Mes, Mesmer was cool. Anthony Zaragoza's favorite maze of 2021 right there was Mesmer. But Slasher. Yeah, twenty one mesmer was was really goaded, but slasher, slasher. opening slasher year was it great? Yep. All right, Dead Man's War versus Origins. <coughs> that, I don't think that's a no brainer for me. That's going to Origins for me, dude. Origins is just stunning. Origins, man. yeah. Origins. Origins is stunning. Origin killer. That is the ultimate love story to Ghost Town. Yeah. Holidays in Hell versus Dark Entities. I gotta go. Holidays in Hell. I really love mm-hmm. the aesthetic of bringing holidays and turn them into a horror theme that's just it's great to me and it was good to see it back again and to hear some of some figure a little bit of figure i love yeah. I like me some figure this one is hard for me because yeah. talent was better in entities but aesthetic was holidays, holidays. Mm-hmm. i know holidays is pretty much a repeat but i gotta go holidays Holidays. Holidays yeah. in hell it is. Yeah. Not only getting the buy round, but also advancing on to the next. Rest in peace. In Chucky peace. final kill count versus Monsteros. 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 I'm going to give my opinion on both because I actually really did. I don't have nothing against Monsteros. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> I just like The Last of Us more than Monsteros. That's all. But Chucky <laughs> final kill count, I'll be honest. It actually surprised me. Like, I was very shocked when I came out of that maze. Like, I was expecting one thing, and walking out, I was like, wow. Talk about the future of the haunt industry. 
I mean, there's a lot it of It was things. a fun maze, but if there was going to be a maze between Monstros and Chucky to skip, I would skip Chucky instantly. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Monstros wins the 3 0 sweep then. Yeah. All right. Midnight Mortuary versus The Exorcist Believer. Ooh. And they're both they're both playing on the themes of possession. Yeah, so that's 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 a that's a good matchup right there. Um, I gotta go. Exorcist believer. Exorcist has always been a property that's that's terrified me, and that maze did that again. But Midnight Mortuary yeah. does the same thing too, though. At points, Midnight Mortuary has that creep factor. Yeah, but yeah, Exorcist hundred percent. Mooch can't even vote Exorcist because he didn't go through. I just love Midnight Mortuary. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pirates Co. It's versus okay. Okay. Uh, okay. by round winner, Terratram Exterminators. I got to go Terratram. I, and it's not even, mm. it doesn't even, no, hold on. It don't even matter the theme. It's just the fact that I get to walk those sets, man. That's what I love the most. I'm going to, Terratram's going to win me over no matter what. And Exterminators was a good fresh take on something original. It was good to get out of Hollywood Harry. It was good to get out of the purge. Right. It was good to get out of fucking The Walking Dead. All those years that I've gone. So it was just good to get something fresh, something new, something original. And I think that was the year that I saw accidentally. No, that was that was 2022, but uh I accidentally was on the terror train with with Chris Jericho, not even knowing Chris Jericho was right in front of me. And I was like, "God damn it." How do I fucking, how does my wrestling senses not go off on that, dude? Like, that's Chris fucking Jericho, bro. One of the greatest all, of all time to do it. And he's just walking around with the beer at Halloween Horror Nights. That's awesome, bro. That's that's exactly what I expect Jericho to do. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah. Ter- it's Terra Tram for me. Chris, yeah. I'm going Terra Tram. Just for Chris Jericho. <laughs> Why am I here? Speak your mind, dog. I, w- I want Pirates Cove. I really do. Yeah, but well, you can't have it. So, but you get to walk on the psycho sets. You get to walk on the war of the world exactly, sets and exactly the fucking nope sets, bro. Exactly why I said, "Why am I here?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna continue with our quarterfinals right after our song break. We got seizure coming up right now with the little dragon spire. Can't wait to hear Whoa. this one. It's gonna Banger. be a fun one. Banger. Banger. Uh, Banger. So yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna finish up our bracket when we come back right here on Nights of Horror Radio.
All right, back here on Knights of Horror Radio, and we are back live. Bracket full, in effect. We are on the, uh, I believe, I don't know, what are we on, the quarterfinals now? Yes, yeah, quarterfinals. Semi? Quarter. Or is it quarter? Quarter, quarterfinals. Quarterfinals. Bracket's heating up. We're getting closer and closer to the edge. Big shout-out to Seizure right there. That's Dragon. Great song. Here. Great You band. can find them on Spotify. You Bangers on only. YouTube. Bangers only. Bangers only, man, on Nights of Horror Radio right here. That, ent- that entire album slaps. Yeah, you're going to hear some more Seizure uh, next week. And uh, now that we are kind of at the more uh, tail end of the of the show, I want to announce next week's show. We have a big show lined up next week. Uh, Paul is going to be joining us back here on Nights of Horror Radio. And we're also going to be joined by none other than the Lone Star himself. Omar is going to be joining us on the show. We're going to be reminiscing at the last year of Dark Harbor 2019, live mm. on Twitch with you guys. So uh, <laughs> definitely tune in for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get you guys ready for Dark Harbor 2024. And uh, what better way to do it than two people who work the event, right? So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Next Tuesday, midnight, uh, Nights of Horror Radio. Actually, I don't even know. Hold on. I'm not even going to say next Tuesday yet because we were kind of debating the night. And uh, as soon as I figure out the night, you'll know the night. It's going to be Monday or Tuesday. Probably Monday. I don't know. He's making me fucking put my wrestling on hold if I do Monday. So <laughs> he needs to understand that. Um, but it's okay. I love him. We'll probably do it Monday or Tuesday. So stay tuned uh, on our, all of our social medias, and you'll you'll know the date when we do. But, yeah, that's next week. Um, hopefully we'll get to some movie reviews and some, and some horror news. Maybe some more haunt news will pop this week. Who knows? But if anything pops in the haunt world, uh, you can tune in to Nights of Horror. We'll probably put up a video about it um and all that fun stuff so the best haunt maze of 2023 in socal is in the quarterfinals right now oh yeah one of these mazes is going to be victorious and let's look at where we are in the bracket right now we're looking at grimoire going up against chilling chambers cinema slasher going up against origins holidays in hell going up against monsteros exorcist believer going up against terror tram it looks like We are going to have an interesting bracket. What I like about this bracket so far, it's going to end amazing. It's going to end with a Horror Nights maze and a Not Scary Farm maze. I'm excited to see what's going to be those final two. I'm scared. uh, You're you're scared. Uh, Yeah, let's let's pick it back up where we were uh, at the quarterfinals right here with Grimoire and the Chilling Chambers. Now, gentlemen, this is where it's going to get very interesting because now these are all the mazes that... We all voted down to this very moment. Now we're going to start getting to the heavy hitters of things. Mooch is <laughs> muting his mic to cough like the freaking chocolate rain guy back in the day. Um, <laughs> I'm going to call you out on all of it. That's Nights of Horror Radio. It's unscripted, uncensored. You're, you're fine. It's fun. Fine. <laughs> um, hey, the light's supposed to be in front of you. <laughs> oh, you got jokes, huh? You got jokes, huh? I'm staying out of this. Uh, he's yeah. Uh, he got jokes. It's okay. All right. I love you. I love you too. We'll find a funny picture of Mooch and put it up on the stream next week. We don't know which. I one got yet. you a couple. I got a few of them myself too. Specifically, some in a misfit shirt and on a bicycle. <laughs> I have a few good ones. <laughs> some paintball gear. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> Chilling chambers or the grimoire. Now this is a tough one. Because I chilling. love, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he just chose chilling. For you, it's it's not a tough one. He chose chilling. What do you choose, Mochi? Ah oh, man, I chilling. just cut you off. It's chilling, chilling, chilling. Uh, yeah. see, Why now, is it a tough one? I'm only going Grimoire because of the storytelling. But chilling is phenomenal. But chilling has a storytelling but, as well. Yeah, it does. It, it has really like, good storytelling. It's, it's not vocal through the soundtrack. Yeah. You gotta you really kinda, pay attention. like 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 you're playing it in your head, you know. Yeah, you gotta really figure it out. And I I feel like too with with Grimoire, the first year it dropped, no one understood it. And it was very I still understand it. it's very self explanatory <laughs> though. It's just it's where the book has ended up throughout the years and what right. kind of chaos it unleashed throughout those years. See, but with that, in order to understand the story, you have to listen and read. I mean, I'm. I mean, I I have read the passages a few times, and they kind of just show you the passages for me. Kind of just related to what was going on in the scene I was about to go in. Um, 
there are some things I didn't understand about it as far as like why are we just in a random 50s household and why are we in like what does this camp has to symbolize like yeah. is this camp gonna get you you know all this you know fun you know like I don't know like I know everything's supposed to tie in and stuff so like I don't know how they went about this but I mean it is what it is um I think it's a phenomenal maze, and if they were to continue the storyline in like a sequel maze or like a different maze that was named different, but it's supposed to be the sequel of that maze, uh, it'd be really mm-hmm. cool. But yeah, Chilling Chambers is obviously the winner, so why am I still talking? <laughs> uh, Cinema Slasher versus Origins. <laughs> oh, this is a hard one for this is the hard one for me too. I already know my vote. <laughs> if it were Sammy, Origins is going all the way to the end for him. I'm gonna have I gotta show my love to Ghost Town and Origins. I'm gonna go Cinema Slasher. <laughs> Mooch technically Why has me? Mooch technically has two mazes he has to represent within Carnival. Oh, man. Matt's the fortunate one that only have the one. Oh yeah, you have two, you have Grimoire too. Yeah, but I don't care about it. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> you ever go to Not Scary Farm with Matt? Don't take him through Grimoire. Don't care about it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what you got, Mooch? You going to break this tiebreaker or what? You don't have a choice. You have to. You got one hand. You I'm, got... A, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say origins. Actually. Oh, he's going origins. What's the reason behind origins? Say origins. Why you, why, why are you picking origins? The stunt work by the Sarah Marshall in that maze. On the rotating fucking what is it? It's like I don't swing. know what it's called. I'm, either, I'm so. gonna let the you know fucking, right now. Our friend swing. From, it's not a swing. The, you're talking the about zip the, line. The, the yeah, the zip line that they have around. Yeah, the room. that show was cool as fuck. I'm gonna let you know right when now. I, when you, I first saw that. I, I, so Ben, I'm gonna let you know right now. I'm the one that voted for for Cinema Slasher. <laughs> I'm ben sorry, Ben. Now, what an upset. I'm so sorry. Uh, I agree. So sorry. Huge upset. Um, but you know, maybe maybe next year, hopefully. Uh, we can we can get him back next year because we know we'll be back next year. Maybe he won't be back in it next year. That's probably why it's an upset. Maybe he's got plans to go somewhere else. You know, maybe he's gonna open a new maze. Maybe he's going to go on the streets. Who knows? Maybe he's going to a different event. Heard Dark Harbor's hiring. Never know now. Um, who knows? Who knows? But Ben, I I do apologize for the upset. I wanted Cinema Slasher to make it to at least the the semifinals. <laughs> but it didn't make it that far. So on to Halloween. Oh, I, I, I will. I, no, hold on. I will say this. I wasn't expecting those two to go up against each other, <laughs> but I knew it was going to happen. How were you not expecting I, it? How were you not expecting it? We went through the bracket I, I don't know. beforehand, I don't know. and then now we're like, going yes down. No. <laughs> he said I'll he wasn't talking. Expecting... I'll stop talking. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Holidays in Hell versus Monsteros. And I think it's the clear winner on this one. It's going to be Monsteros. Wrong. Monsteros. You said wrong? You <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, Monsteros, say, Monsteros, Monsteros, like, Monsteros. Nah, bro. The animatronics in that were second to none. Dude, uh, so bad. I've seen that freaking. Shout yes, out. Uh, shout out. Chicken shout, thing, hey, whatever. Hey, I'm just saying, if you know, you know. Shout out Green Clown. Ah, fuck that guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. You heard it here first. He's gonna it's see this. Love. He's gonna see this watch. <laughs> oh, I know. He it's all love. First. Um, <laughs> extra believer versus Terra Tram exterminators. Uh, I'm gonna go Terra Tram still. I'm telling you, you can't. You can't. Tram. You you have to choose the tram because you didn't even go tram. through Exorcist. I went through. I'm going Exorcist, but it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> all right, now we are in our semifinals. <sighs> Are we in the semifinals? Yeah, we are. This yeah. is the semifinals, yeah. man. Uh, two Not Scary Farm. Two Halloween Horror Nights. Hayride. Shacktober didn't make it. However, Shacktober made it, you know, past a few rounds. Um, I don't think Hayride. Hayride made it a few rounds, too. Um, but in the end, it came down to Not Scary Farm versus Halloween Horror Nights. In our opinions, probably the two big powerhouse haunts in SoCal. Uh, and quite possibly in the West Coast, to be honest with you. Um no disrespect on any other haunts. That's just looking at stats, numbers, history. It's just what it is. On top of that, it's three people. <laughs> yeah, 
three people it's, it's out of an entire community. It's, it's not the general public. Yeah, you we're know? three okay. people. Not opinion. second to none, dude. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> the one that started it all. The he's, one that started it all. Yeah, he's he's really not wrong. Over fifty that, years ago, man. That, in, that entire event. That's what, crazy. That's what kicked awesome. it off. Yep. Crazy awesome is the word. We've all had our moments there, uh, individually <laughs> on the streets. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I've seen some stuff. Um, I've laughed at stuff. I've cried at stuff too. You know, oh, even yeah. on closing nights, man. It's, it's oh yeah, intense one. closing nights are always touching. What do you guys think in a few weeks? Now this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun one because y'all motherfuckers be biased to shit about this shit, especially you, <laughs> Matt. Uh, what do you think in a few weeks we do best? scare zone of 2023 now mm. before we go any further with this because matt i already know you you're gonna be fucking biased as shit with ghost town i no, get it i i already got my we, zone of the year we gotta we gotta go based off a few things okay how talent reacted to the guests um the immersiveness of the zone and the overall look and feel of like costuming and aesthetics of the zone we gotta be fair uh -huh. I think, right? Like how we're doing with this. Like all these, we were fair because we were fucking like, this was better than this because of this. No ghost town all the way, okay? It's probably going to win. I'm not going to not gonna sugarcoat it. It might win. But you never know. I'm just going to say it's up there. I already have my list in my head, so. And it's only 2023. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we're going to do multiple events again. <laughs> I might swap out one event for another. Six Flags is going to start coming. All right. Chilling yeah. Chambers versus Origins. You got 50 years of history in one maze, and you got another 50 years of history in another maze in its own way. Exactly. It's a 50-50 shot. I'm, I'm picking Chambers. I have to. I have to, for sure. So... What I loved so much about Origins was the storytelling it told to expand the already lore that was already kind of there, but to bring it to more public knowledge. Um, and that year was impressive, 2019, because they you know managed to tie in the zone with the maze and the show. They'd never done that before, so that was fun. Um, fast forward all these years, and it still never disappoints. Um, Hang that witch. If you know, you know. Yes. <laughs> Replace the W with the B. Works every time. Um, Sammy knows that one really well. Um, <laughs> but no, it, in all seriousness, I, I, I applaud the talent every year. They really immerse us into that story, bring it to life. Ton of Easter eggs that they did the overall all Easter eggs before Chilling Chambers did, you know, and so they they really capitalized on that and uh and whatnot. That being said, Chilling Chambers did offer me a lot of stuff that I never got to see in person, only over on the internet. I know it was yes. just brief. I know it was not probably what it was to where it was scale-wise. I think they did the absolute best job that they possibly could to replicate what that feeling and what that looked like. Um, so I, I got to give it to Chambers at the end of the day. Well, my vote's fucked then. <laughs> <laughs> but why – so why is it Origins for you, though? So for Origins – to see pretty much a fan made story because not to make story. It was no, Ted Gordy. Ted and who was, John, right? Well, it was Ted alone. When he first started scaring at Nots, he had this, I don't even know what it's called, like a website, a forum, pretty much, fan forum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he created the story of Ghost Town. Uh, Ultimate Haunt. Yeah, ultimatehaunt.com. Yeah, that was yeah. it. So to be able to see a fan of the event now come in at a present time and bring something to life. It's very cool. And also, it's just that hits more feels to me than uh, chilling. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, indeed. Origins is, is a stunning maze, and I know it's coming close to hanging it up for you know soon. I I wouldn't doubt if this was its last year this year, but if they can push it one more year, how long has it been going on for now? 2019 was its opening year, so that's four years of operation now. Next year will be five. Yeah. 
2019, 21. Sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a 10 year maze. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say survive. if they keep, if they keep the talent up really well in there, which um, year after year it's usually pretty good, you know. Um, I think it could, you know, last seven, nine. I really years, hope so. Maybe I really hope so. It's yeah. it's a great fucking maze. Yeah, it really is. It's For great sure. storytelling, everything, design, Easter eggs, awesome. Yeah. Um. All right. Over on the HHN side, who's going to the finals with Chilling Chambers? Monsteros or Teratram? I'm gonna say Monsteros. Yeah. If I'm going up against something like Chilling Chambers, I need to pull out all the stops for this one, and it's gotta go to Monsteros because Monsteros is probably the closest, best competitor to Chilling Chambers. In- incredibly aesthetically pleasing. The animatronics yeah. really well done. You know, see that was one thing that really caught me with Monsteros. With animatronics today, you know, you still hear like the hydraulics and all the compressed air moving in them. I don't recall hearing any of that. Yeah. So the music is so loud, it freaking. I I get that, (laughs) but usually you're able to hear the compressed air stuff. Yeah. If it's something moving up and down, you know, you'll hear that, you know, you'll hear it. Dude, it's um, it is, and, yeah. and it was just it was really really well done. Yeah, even 100%. with how fluid the, their motions were, it was amazing. Yes. Oh, 100 percent. I I really loved Acting. every every bit of it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Monsteros killed it. There was even one portion where I thought something was an animatronic, and it actually turned out to be talent. I was like, "Holy shit, you were doing those moves <laughs> so spot on!" Like, that was incredible. And then there was even like like the smells and and just like oh, the. Yeah the lore yeah. you know and then i would spend time in that scare zone right out there especially when we went to go do the vip round and just spending time and watching those guys work you know and watching yeah. all that beautiful talent work out there man like they were killing it out there in that and they were making every bit of that zone like theirs and and that's what you love to see especially when you know horn Nights is a little bit different than most theme parks obviously as far as space wise goes so they utilize everything that they possibly can and over the years let's be honest it's gotten a lot smaller in certain areas um, oh yeah but they still manage to to utilize the best they to they can to the best of their abilities right they can yeah. still do better but yeah oh 100 percent uh, yeah but well, well i mean there's always room for improvement for them for sure yeah that, that's a different subject <laughs> Yeah, we can always do that. I, I I thought of another thing that'd be a lot of fun this uh, for a future episode too is to kind of like make and like we all come in beforehand and we all make our own Halloween Horror Nights map. Like we just choose our mazes and then what we mm-hmm. why we would and then we present them all. Like this is why I chose this for this that we make our own originals and shit. That'd be dope as fuck. Mm-hmm. Actually, sounds like fun. I'm down. We're gonna. It does sound I gotta find some blank cool. maps and then we'll get we'll get them going. That could be a future episode. Stay tuned. You never know what's going to happen on the yeah. radio. Who knows? All right. Let's go to our last round to determine the best maze of 2023 in SoCal. And that is Not to Scary Farms 50th Anniversary Chilling Chambers and Halloween Horror Nights 2024's Monsteros, the Monsters of Latin America. Now, a lot can be said with both these mazes, both incredible in their own state both very different and unique in their own ways. Uh, Chilling Chamber is focusing on the 50-year history of Not Scary Farm, an event that started it all for the haunt scene. You know, So there's a lot of history within that maze, whether it's props, whether it's famous sculpts over the years, costumes, whatever it may be. They just went through their warehouse, and they literally put everything and almost anything they can possibly find that would catch people's attentions, and they did a very phenomenal job on that. But then on the other hand, you have Monsteros, the Monsters of Latin America, where we know in the past John Murdy has created some amazing, amazing stories with Latin American folktales. Uh, and this was the universal monsters of Latin American folktale right here. This was, when we went through this maze, we got not one, not two, but three different creatures on top of a, in my opinion, a bitchin' looking narrator from, you know, the guy that was, you know, in the graveyard and everything. I loved his look, his aesthetic. Um, animatronics were insane, brand new, like, state-of-the-art shit that you've never seen in a haunt before that is starting to pop up more and more. 
Um, smells were on point. Story was a solid story from start to finish and then to end in that scare zone. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better, more beautiful maze with Monsteros, the monsters of Latin America. So you got these two juggernauts now. <laughs> with all that being said, Matt, what's your vote? Shit. Dude, I have no idea. I, see, the thing is, it's, it, it's really hard to decide because each event is its own animal. Mm-hmm. Well, even not even thinking about the event, just the mazes themselves. Right. If these yeah. two were put into a warehouse with no theming around, what would you go? Are you talking about if I had like a behind the scenes tour, lights on, everything, or? Well, just based on what we've seen. Like, uh, like, like full effect, okay. but no okay. actors. Full effects. So what what Matt what is that? trying to say? Think of each of these so, mazes by themselves in the the sound stage. So not even thinking about Scary Farm, not even thinking about Horror Nights. No, right. I, and I understand yes. that. Like putting both of these mazes inside of a, a warehouse, right? Are we yeah. in, now? Are we in full fucking effects, actors, everything yes. full effect? Everything. Con. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I. That's all I was asking because I didn't know what you meant by that. Like, am I walking through them with lights on? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, if we're in full effect, and we're in one, uh, we're in one fucking thing. I'm probably. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm probably gonna lean towards Monsteros. And that was hard for me to say because I absolutely talked very highly of Chilling Chambers, but looking at what Monsteros did. You made a temporary animatronic for a maze within that big ass animatronics. Yeah, but that big ass bird, yeah, like that that, was very cool. That was insane. Like I remember constantly looking around to see how they pulled that off and how they hit, how well they hid that, and they hit it well. They did a very good job on hiding that, and you know to kind of get a better understanding and. And look at the culture and what is the lore of these kind of folk tales that you've heard or may have not even heard of over the years of growing up as a kid, especially if you're anything with anything to do with Latin American culture. Um, you know, you grew up listening to these things. So like to kind of have these stories be told to you and seeing all these stories come to life, it's fucking terrifying. Uh, especially when they did La Llorona. Like that that tale has scared the fuck out of me. And yeah. then when when pop culture and everybody gets their hands on it and make it scarier and scarier, you know, and, and tell the story differently or tell it a little bit more aggressively, it's fucking terrifying to think about, you know? And and so, yeah, Monsteros was another one that just makes you think, like, much like people have seen sightings of the Chupacabra, of La Llorona, like, are these creatures potentially out there too? There's some realism to it, too. You know what I mean? Like, that's the scary part for me is, like, these are based off folktales, so someone must have saw something when they were, when they wrote these stories, so. Right. I'm going to have to look at it from a fresh person's perspective because I remember before we went into Monstros, like, throwing throwing it back to midsummer scream mm. like i heard about everything and like all the back lore about every single one of these characters in monstros you know and with that knowledge i was able to picture everything correctly i knew what everything was you know right chambers going into it at the same time you you know that it's a history maze but you don't you wouldn't really know what everything was you right. know especially if you're coming into it in the year 2023 like it is your first year here you know right <sighs> So you're looking at it, you were looking at but, it more as the casual haunt goer rather than yes. the diehard. Right. Right. Yeah. 
I think if you're looking at it, this is just my perspective too. If you're looking at that in that that perspective, I think Monster O's is going to walk out with appealing more audiences than Chilling Chambers would. But seeing now, even going off of that logic, I'm a fan of both. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and there there are the the handful majority that are just haunt fans. Yeah. Of just well, that, even you know being a haunt fan and then being also a folklore fan. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> it's this is a really tough decision. I mean, I have to go Monstros just solely based out of what I saw, just solely based out of the future of the industry. Um, had you would have asked me this question back in November, I would have chose Chilling Chambers hands down. But now that I've had more time to process things, to rewatch a lot of things, to really look at and pay attention at certain things, there's just something that Monstros really did, and it goes the same thing with Chucky that they did where. You know, I mean, I'm not saying replace every scare actor with animatronics because it's kind of in the same concept of AI taking over things. Yeah. But put a few here and there in and, and mix them and interact them with the talent. It looks pretty fucking cool. Like, I would say a lot of the effects in Chucky looked phenomenal. The effects in fucking Monsteros. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Like, I love where the future of the haunt industry goes, and I and I have to say the two haunts that are constantly pushing the boundaries that I'm seeing now are Halloween Horror Nights and Not Scary Farm. You know, these two are yeah. pushing and changing the the ideas of what was once a haunt. Now they're putting in their own rules. Like this can also be a haunt too. Um, so yeah, I I I I have to go Monsteros at the end of the day. I mean, Chilling Chambers continues to have a special place in my heart and as a as a fan of the history of of this event it was amazing to go through and see things that i've never seen before see things that i haven't yeah. seen in a long time but let's be honest it might be it might be coming back for a few more years so it you know at yeah. least i get to see it multiple times and with monsteros i only probably got to see it once unless it comes back by popular demand so now since i'm having a tough time i'm gonna go off my walkthroughs, my personal walkthrough, like I'm gonna have to go chilling. Okay. To me, chilling was always on. The when I went through Monstros, it was empty. There was no telling at all. So I had a I few go Monstros uh walkthroughs. But okay, I get you. All right, Moochie. <sighs> Who is gonna take home the title for the best maze of twenty twenty three within the four haunts that we've to determine we'll, we'll call it the knights of the knights of horror radio best maze championship best maze award whatever you want to call it call it a dundee for all i care <laughs> mm, is gonna be i promise it is not Bias, chilling chambers, but chambers. I promise it's not biased because I really love the fuck out of Monstros for being what it is. Ch chambers, the talent was on fucking fire when I went through. I agree, hundred percent. Long ass line every night. You know, like people really really wanted that maze you know yeah i know um <laughs> i wanted i wanted some chilling every, chambers every single so i showed up late to the game 2018 right i missed out on a lot of the old stuff this gave me like the closure that i didn't get to see in person you know hearing matt always talk about stuff like asylum and what was which one was the clown? Was it Bobo's or C three? It was a mix of Uncle Bobo's C three Killer Clown College, right? Um, so again, yeah, there's I had, a lot. I had only seen footage of that stuff online. Only you know, this this gave me what I wanted. You know, all righty, and you know, I love I love Universal. I love Monstros more in specific. Monstros is fucking fantastic. Well, but I, but I really enjoyed the fuck out of Chambers. <laughs> out of the opinions of three Haunt fans, your winner. And, and it's just three Haunt fans. Just three. <laughs> just three Haunt fans. Just three. 
We have very small voices. <laughs> Out of the opinions of three Haunt fans, your winner for the Knights of Horror Radio Best Maze of 2023 award goes to Not Scary Farms 50th Anniversaries, The Chilling Chambers. Uh, congratulations, Chilling Chambers. Made it all the way through. I had a feeling Chilling Chambers would probably be one of the, the top going into this, to be honest with you. Uh, it was between that, Slasher, and... Um, yes. I honestly thought you guys would have voted for Last of Us. And I'm very shocked about that still. But Monsteros, I mean, it's it's a good competitor going up against it, so it's okay. I think if you were to have different... Sorry, not different, but other um, friends of ours. Right. They probably would have said Last of Us. Oh, 100%. You know, I know who's last of us, who's not. Trust me. Yeah. Like, like Dented is very upset right now if he's still watching. <laughs> if he's still watching. Yeah. yeah. Well, but. ladies and gentlemen, uh, well, first and foremost, thank you guys so much uh, for spending the uh, the early morning, late night with me, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. It was great. Uh, you guys are always. I'll see Paul next week, but Matt, you're always welcome back on the show. Anytime you want to come out, we're going to also be planning our scare zone one pretty soon, hopefully. So we'll, we'll, we'll tune in. Sounds good, soon. man. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate you, man. Uh, and I appreciate you, Paul. Thank you for coming on week two. Always. Always. Uh, and I will talk to you guys very, really soon. <laughs> all good that makes sense uh but yeah thank you guys so much for uh having some fun with me with the bracket tonight and talking halloween horror nights with me and uh until next time for you two i will see you guys uh really soon you guys have a good one cool bye chat later, brother. later. all righty let's go to this. wow ladies and gentlemen that was matt that was mooch uh insane bracket we just had fun with uh the first ever Knights of Horror Radio Best Maze of 2023. A little, a little late for it, I know, but uh, it was, it was, uh, it was something. Hey, if you guys uh, are new to Knights of Horror Radio or just new to uh, the Knights of Horror brand in general, um, check us out. Uh, we do a lot of live streams here on Twitch every Tuesdays. We are here for Knights of Horror Radio. Uh, I'm going to be getting some games back on it really soon, so stay tuned for that for some more gameplays. A lot of stuff coming out really soon. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the video game, coming out really soon. Going to hit on that. Um, super, super stoked for that. Um, but, yeah, we do. I mean, we cover haunt. We cover horror. And, uh, and yeah, we, we just have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, so thank you guys for, for the constant support, for subscribing, um, the follows. Appreciate it all. Make sure to hit us up on all of our social medias. Literally right down here so check those out um and you can catch uh tiktoks daily uh of the show uh throughout the week uh so tune into our tiktoks to see some uh edits of past episodes as well as finding the replays on youtube uh which you're either watching here now or you're gonna watch later so thank you guys so much for everything i i love doing nights of horror radio i'm having so much fun doing nights of horror radio weekly every week and uh hopefully we can do this longer longer extended periods um more guests more original music all that fun stuff thank you guys so much for all the support if you guys know anybody or if you guys do write original music send them in uh dm us on our socials and we'll get things we'll get the ball rolling for next week's episode speaking of next week's episode paul and omar from the QM Slider team, join me, and we are going to be talking uh, all things Dark Harbor. We're going to be reminiscing to Dark Harbor 2020, uh, I'm sorry, 2019, and then we are going to be um, just chatting away and, and reminiscing to the old times and, and getting everybody ready and what to prepare for for Dark Harbor 2024. Now, I don't know exactly what they're going to be doing, but you'll get the idea of the vibe. Hear some stories, um, watch some POVs, uh, the Slider Show, of course, so... It's going to be a lot of fun. But until then, I'm your host, Anthony. You have just listened, finished listening to Nights of Horror Radio. I hope you guys enjoyed another episode of Nights of Horror Radio. Hit that follow button. And uh, until then, stay spooky, y'all. Talk to you guys real soon. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday, midnight, for Nights of Horror Radio. Stay spooky. <laughs>